intellectual property is is naturally a question of interest to to, uh, to competition economists because there is clearly an interface in the sense that uh, you know information goods are goods which uh, have a consumption that is non-rival. I mean, the fact that someone is consuming an information good doesn't prevent someone else from consuming it at the same time. Uh, it's also a good uh, for which it's difficult to undertake exclusion. So, I mean, this is why we need to have patents. We need to have a legal system in order to exclude people from the use of uh, every information good in order to make sure that there is an incentive to produce this uh, information good in the first place. But the consequence is, of course, that there is exclusion. And um, exclusion is something which is naturally of interest to, uh, to competition economies to worry about the, the consequence of uh, foreclosure. When we consider a um, standard essential patent, then, of course, sort of new issues uh, come into play because um, when sort of patents have been included uh, as part of a standard, I mean, the concern that one might have about uh, the, the consequences of exclusion, of course, are different because it may very well be that when standards are, are essential, uh, that sorry, then patents are declared to be essential for a standard, uh, that, I mean, the implementers, the users have no alternative anymore. So they really have to use the, uh, the patents that are, are considered to be essential. And so the prospect for hold up, the prospect for the exercise of market power may be, may be greater. Now, at the same time, uh, as a key pro quo for being included uh, as part of the standard, the, uh, the holders of the uh, intellectual property, the patent holders, have typically committed to licensing in the particular conditions. I mean, they are usually referred to as, uh, as fair and non-discriminatory, the so-called uh, friend terms. And so, I mean, there is a specific question that arises with respect to standard essential patent, I mean, for which there is a friend commitment of whether indeed uh, the, the pursuit of injunction, which is the, the subject of our research, whether the pursuit of injunction is a, is a concern as such in terms of an abuse of dominant position. The research that we undertake uh, tries to uh, understand how injunctions will affect the uh, negotiation on the standard essential patent. And um, so uh, we start from the uh, observation that indeed hold up can be a concern and that when uh, uh, patents are standard essential, the, the scope for hold up may be significant. Uh, we also recognize the fact that um, the uh, the friend term may uh, impose a significant constraint on the uh, on the behavior of the patent holder and we also recognize the fact that in the absence of uh, injunctions if there is really no threat of injunction whatsoever there may be possibly another concern which is reverse hold up and reverse hold up is a possibility that the implementers the users of the technology uh, will then propose royalty rates that are very low uh, below what would be considered to be friend or will, will delay negotiation, for instance. And so our research is trying to first see empirically in the European context uh, what happens with respect to the negotiation on uh, royalties with respect to standard essential patent, and in particular what happens if the patent holders do seek an injunction in, uh, in court. And second, uh, our research is trying to model uh, what the European court system uh, tend to do to see, to try to identify whether there is indeed a concern in terms of uh, rates that may be uh, above the friend rate in equilibrium, that is to say uh, uh, whether there is a concern for hold up or the opposite, whether there is a concern for reverse hold up, that is to say situations in which the royalty rates are below the friend level. There is one way of summarizing the paper in just one sentence, which was uh, suggested to me by, uh, by a colleague, which is to say that uh, prospective licensees can play games in uh, negotiations on standard essential patent in the same way as patent holder. I think that the, the focus of the uh, competition agencies so far has been on the ability of the patent holder you know, to play games, to extract uh, royalties in excess of the friend rate. What we show is that you know, the prospective licenses in the current institutional environment can also play games. And that it's not clear that the current institutional environment does a bad job at balancing the risk of hold-up and the risk of reverse hold-up. Um, yeah, I, I think that the, uh, 
the, the results of our uh, analysis are fairly robust in terms of the underlying principles. Um, of course, the policy conclusions that, that we draw um, may be confined to the European environment to the extent that we have only analyzed the, the procedures in the uh, European context. Uh, and uh, we found that the European court system, um, I mean, seems to operate in a way that balances the interest of the uh, prospective licensee and the uh, and the patent holder, but I wouldn't want to put forward any judgment on what happens outside the European jurisdictions. I mean.